6, 1944, D-Day. Allied troops land on the windswept beaches of Normandy. The invasion of Germany's fortress Europe begins. Ein Datum von weltgeschichtlicher Bedeutung. Unter dem Druck Moskaus haben Briten und Amerikaner die seit langem angekündigte und von uns erwartete Invasion begonnen. The game we're going to be looking at and playing is Battle for Normandy. Breakout from the Beaches, June 1944. This game is published by Tactics Adventure Games uh, in England in 1982. It's a two-player introductory war game covering the invasion of France uh, at the Normandy Beaches on June 6th of 1944. It comes in a box. It's got a 16 by 23 and a half full-color mounted map board in two pieces. Uh, it has 100 die cut counters, rules and tables, and a 600 die. Okay, so let's examine the components in a little bit more detail. Okay, what we have here is your standard um, bookshelf uh, game box. The artwork's pretty nice on the cover. And uh, it was blank on the back, but I think there was like a, a back sheet that um, came in the shrink wrap that, um, you know, told you all your components and stuff like that. So, anyway. This is the game box. Let's take a little bit closer look at the map, shall we? Okay, as you can tell, it's pretty much your standard hexagonal war game map. It is a mounted map board um, in two pieces. And the terrain is fairly clear. It looks a little uh, busy at first, but um, overall it's not that bad. There is the train effects chart up there in the upper right hand corner, which you um, probably can't see very clearly at this moment. And then down here we have your uh, standard game turn track. We have your standard uh, train effects chart. And then we have some uh, holding boxes for uh, allied reinforcements. And also you can see the invasion hexes. Um, where the units will begin uh, begin the game during the uh, initial invasion phase. Okay, next we'll look at the counters. Okay, here we have a couple of uh, a couple of typical counters used in the game. You notice that they use uh, icons or whatever to determine the unit type. Um, the ones over here in uh, bluish gray color are of course Germans and the Allies are in this brown color both uh, the UK, Canadian and the United States um, all share the same color. The white number is basically its um, combat strength and there's a letter number code on the back of some of them which indicates where they start the game at which hex they'll start the game at. So this will start on F1 and this will start on I5. And then you have some counters like these. They have the same uh, information. This is a mechanized counter. It's uh, UK, United Kingdom. And it has an alphanumeric code on the back which indicates the game turn that it comes in as a reinforcement. So this will be game turn 6. So it'll come in be placed on the track and it'll come in on game turn six. Kind of like that. So that is pretty much it for the counters. There's a few others. There's some air uh, air power for the allies. There's some naval support for the allies. Some of those are optional rules or some optional reinforcements for the Germans and stuff. But pretty much the counters are fairly plain but serviceable. And they seem to work pretty good. Uh, contrast on the map yeah, is okay, I guess. Just from what I can tell here. So, anyway, that's pretty much the main game components. Okay, I'll try to make this as brief as possible since you're going to be looking at a static shot of the map for a little bit. And I know that'll be terribly boring after a few minutes. So, 
I will try to spare you the agony of that. Um, as I said before, this is pretty much your standard hex encounter game. Um, it has stacking, zones of control, although I'm not sure if they call them that in this game or not, but they have the same effects. Uh, there's different uh, movement point costs for the mechanized or non-mechanized units. Um, uh, I think stacking is, you can only stack a certain number of strength points in a hex, and they're also limited by nationality. Let's look at uh, the sequence of play real quick. You have a special invasion turn. The invasion, uh, the invasion turn allows the allied player to basically attack out of these um, initial setup hexes and you'll roll on the table and you're just going to basically try to push the German counters back. Uh, bear in mind this is just for example purposes so don't uh, think this is the actual units or their setup. But, you know, you'll basically roll a die and see what happens. If the German unit is forced to retreat one or two hexes you get to, ah, sorry, you get to advance uh, to follow up uh, on that retreat. So, I don't know if that showed up very well or not, but anyway, I know I could zoom in a little bit more, but I think I'm pretty much at the limit of my zoom at the moment. So anyway, after that, you will play, the rest of the game is going to be eight turns long. You're going to have the German player movement. Uh, he'll move his units already on, on the map board, and he will also bring in reinforcements. Then the German units may attack, which are adjacent to allied units, may attack them. And the Allied player will move his units already ashore, and once he's finished moving those, he may land reinforcements that are available. And then the Allied units may now attack adjacent German units. And then the Allied player moves a game turn marker one box to the right, and we start a new game, game turn. So, that's pretty much it for the sequence of play. The rest of the rules, um, just go on to explain the rest of that in detail. There are weather effects, um, one thing this game does not have, I believe, is, or does it? I don't think it has supply, per se. I could be wrong, but I don't think the game covers supply, which I find uh, quite interesting at the moment. Anyway, anyway <coughs> there are some optional rules involving naval units, like I said, and uh, some optional German uh, units. Let's see, victory conditions, how to win. To win in battle for Normandy, the Allied player has to attack his opponent relentlessly in a bid to capture as many city hexes as possible before the end of the game. Some city hexes are worth more than others. This reflects their historical importance to the Allies. At the end of game turn 8, the Allied player is awarded victory points. He gets 5 points if he controls both Kane, both Kane hexes and 5 points if he controls Cherbourg and two points for every other city hex that he controls. He also gets one point for every landing hex that he still has in his control. If his victory points add up to 16 or more, he's won. If not, the German player wins. So that's pretty much it. Um, you'll have to forgive me on some of the pronunciation of uh, names and stuff like that. Um, I barely speak English and understand it well enough to hold a coherent conversation, so uh, don't expect me to understand uh, foreign words and all that type of stuff. So, anyway, that's pretty much the major part of the game. It's pretty much just uh, move and shoot. So, I think that pretty much wraps up the introduction, as far as I can tell. I will proceed with the setup, and we'll come back and start turn number one.